Now before we begin, uh, it's really important to understand the motivation behind why you would run a full Bitcoin node. Um, the, the question needs to be asked, well, what's in it for me? Um, and so the best way that I like to explain this is if you think of in the physical realm, um, if I was to pay you in gold um, for you know some products or services that you gave me, would you automatically, and if I gave you that gold in a brown paper bag or you know some sort of brown bag, um, would you immediately trust that I have given you the right amount, uh, the fact that it is even gold in the first place, and uh, you know whether it's legitimate? The answer is probably not. What you would do is you would open the brown bag, have a look at it, inspect it, maybe weigh it, those sorts of things. You, what you are doing here is verifying that it is actually gold. In the digital realm, um, what we need to do is run a full node to verify that those bitcoins are actually bitcoins and not some sort of fake um, amount that is sitting on our in our wallet. Um, and so really, what a Bitcoin node is, is a way for you to verify incoming transactions and your current balance. Now, if you're not running a full node, you are trusting somebody else to feed you that information. And that could be dummy data. You, 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 there is no way to verify that what they are showing you is actually Bitcoin. It represents numbers on a screen. So for example, uh, say you have your Trezor, your hardware wallet, and you plug that in and you go to the um, Trezor website and you log in. Same thing with Ledger, uh, with their Ledger Live software. You put your Ledger into your computer and it opens up um, in, a, in a piece of software. How do you know that the Ledger software or the Trezor uh, web interface is actually part or those Bitcoins that are shown there are actually part of the 21 million coins that are on issue that we all agreed to. Um, and the answer is, well, you don't. You are trusting Trezor, you are trusting Ledger um, to feed you that information because you are using their node to verify it. What if one day Trezor or Ledger or you know any other company that you're fetching your balances from um, decides, you know what, we believe that Bitcoin has 25 million coins and not 21 million coins. And so they're showing you a balance that is uh, a, a number out of 25 million coins that is significantly diluted. Um, and so this is why we need to first and foremost verify our own balances uh, using the node that we downloaded, that we um, fetched from Bitcoin Core. And so running a node is the most trust minimized way of verification. And it's really incredibly important that it is accessible to the uh, individual level. So what that means is I don't need to run a massive server. I don't need to have a huge investment. I don't need to be a company. I don't need to be, you know, some kind of huge entity with a lot of wealth to be able to do this. You need to be able to verify your coins at an individual level um, rather than a giant conglomerate corporation. Um, and that is sort of how we want to keep Bitcoin. We want to make it such that it is always accessible to the individual using computer parts and hardware that is always going to be available for the individual. The reason that we do that is that if it's not accessible to the you know everyday consumer, um, then what happens is we end up with centralized servers and the controllers of these centralized servers or nodes have the ability to censor you, um, they can block payments, and you then get into a situation where you're asking for permission to transact 
uh, on the Bitcoin network. And so that really isn't a, um, yeah, that, that's not really something that we desire. We want everybody to be able to participate on the Bitcoin network. And so if you're being censored or blocked by somebody, then that represents a, you know, uh, an issue. The other thing that you're doing when you're running a full node is that you are actually defending your chosen rule set. Now, Bitcoin is a voluntary participation. Um, and so when you run the software that you decide is money, um, you're deciding that, you know, you believe that there should be only up to a maximum of 21 million coins uh, that are on issue. Um, and, you know, you're defending that um, and making sure that this is the node that I wish to participate and transact on with other people. And those who are going to pay me should also be part of that 21 million coins uh, and not something else. So the, that is, you know, the, the main reason or the, or the main sort of um, motivation to run your own node is to just be satisfied that yes, nobody is trying to trick you um, and that you are participating in or the coins that you have earned um, or collected or bought uh, are actually Bitcoins and not something else. Um, and so the other thing that we need to make sure is that we are an economic node. And what that means is, well, if I was to spin up 500 nodes on different virtual machines, is that an econo are those 500 different economic nodes? The answer is no. Uh, and the reason is, is because, well, uh, they're under the control of just one single person. Um, and so that's not really decentralized, so to speak. And typically, a household would represent an economic node. And uh, the other reason that you would um, run your own Bitcoin node is through privacy. Now, it, well, it enhances privacy. So when you go and plug your Trezor into uh, your computer and you go out and query um, the blockchain uh, using their Bitcoin node um, and it gives, gives a result back, what's happened? Your internet, or so your IP address has been logged with Trezor's node querying what's known as an XPUB or a master public key. And that master public key contains all of your uh, past and future transactions. So what that means is your IP address is now being logged with every single one of your transactions. And when you put these together, you can really start to paint a picture of what uh, a person or at least an internet connection is doing. So that is something that we want to remove. Um, and so we can do this by running a full node. And lastly, uh, you run a full Bitcoin node and this is the very, very last reason you do so to help out the network, um, propagate blocks to other peers that you are connected to. Um, and at, or that is peers meaning other nodes that your, um, that your node will be connecting to. So those are the key reasons that we would be running a full node. Um, it's really important to understand the motivation first, uh, and hopefully that gives you some form of motivation to go out and actually uh, run a full node, um, because there are two things to, 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 to this, um, you know, to Bitcoin. It's number one, self-custody, which is uh, hold your own keys. And the second thing is to run your own node. So with these two things in mind and taken care of, we can essentially make ourselves sovereign as well as uh, remove ourselves from any sort of um, central banking decision-making or centralized decision-making uh, through corporations, banks, so on and so forth. So we become immune to these types of things. Hold your own keys, run your own node. These are the two things that will achieve some level or a, a better level of sovereignty than the current banking system.